I seriously and truthfully thought the PlayStation Portal was going to be trash on its announcement, and I don't think I've ever been so wrong when it comes to a new gaming release. Now I can't speak for everybody, but 1010% this definitely fits into my lifestyle more than I thought it would, fixing problems I didn't really know how to fix. And this whole thing might sound a little corny, but as somebody who struggles to find even the slightest bit of time for myself, this device has surprisingly given me back the tiniest bit of control over that. Between the day job, being a husband and a dad, all while building up a YouTube business, sometimes I talk more about gaming than actually playing them. And my scale has been tipped for so long, I almost sort of forgot what balance even means. But what is this thing really? Well, to start, I wanna say the PlayStation Portal is by no means perfect, which I'll definitely touch on. And it's also not the first of its kind, nor the only solution. But what it does at its core is remote gaming for the PlayStation 5. And what makes this one a little bit more special is that it just does the job right. Well, more than right, actually. As the name might suggest, this is metaphorically a portal to your existing PlayStation 5, which lets you access your games all without being near your PlayStation console. And wherever you are to make this happen, you'll just need a good internet connection. The beauty of this device though, like many others, is it simply fits into so many different lifestyles. With that though, how do I use it and why the hell don't I just sit down at my desk and play my PS5? And as simple and as basic as that might sound, those times that I have where I do get to just sit at my desk and play games are becoming a little bit less frequent, especially with a second kid on the way. You work your 9 to 5, maybe you have an hour to pick up the kids from school and eat dinner with your family. For me at least, I'm clocking back in after all of that to make YouTube videos. Where the portal comes in though for me are those special times throughout the day where I can catch maybe 5 or 10 minutes and actually make progress on my gaming backlog. For example, Spider-Man 2 has been out for about a month and I've gotten a whopping 7 hours in. But half of that has now been on the PlayStation Portal because I actually can now. And of course, my lack of work-life balance isn't actually what makes this device so special since it really comes down to just how good of a device this is. Now over the last week, I've had a gnarly cold thanks to the many viruses my kid brings home from daycare and legitimately just laying in bed playing my PlayStation has been a lifesaver. Sitting in the parking lot waiting for my wife's appointment to be over has also never been better. But it's not like I can't just scroll social media or something else, but honestly, I'd rather just game. Forgetting about me though, in reality, I can see this absolutely being massive for people who might have like a two hour commute, or maybe a student who has those dumbass schedules with two hours between lectures. Maybe it's for those other parents who might maybe be trapped during nap time, the struggle is definitely real. The thing for me though is that the whole experience isn't just half baked. I mean, the display on here really does look good and it's actually well sized. The LCD is 8 inches and it does get super bright, which is noticeably awesome, especially when I am playing in my car on a sunny day, and it's not just the brightness either. Game Games on here really do just look good. Of course it won't be the 4K or the 120Hz you might have on a monitor or TV, but it still gives a solid 60Hz at 1080p. And pulling from the PlayStation 5 design, this looks and feels like a PlayStation product. Not only is it well built, but it's actually pretty damn well designed. One thing I didn't really expect to love here is actually the placement of the ports. It's tucked into the back and underneath. The Type-C port and the headphone jack are simply out of the way. I know the bar is kind of low for a lot of people on something like that, but for me to not just get pissed off with something like that is definitely a huge plus. As a whole though, this device is pretty much a DualSense controller with a big ass screen right in the middle. It even has the same tiny PlayStation symbols you find on a DualSense controller, which adds an added sense of grippiness, as well as all the other same buttons you find. And what you do get with this compared to a backbone line device, or even a laptop with remote play, is the actual DualSense controller haptics and features. With that, you do have the same adaptive triggers you'd find on a full-size controller. For me, this has always been one of the main features that made me fall in love with the PlayStation 5 to begin with, so definitely a big one for me. Other than that, the joysticks are the tiniest bit smaller, but feel about the same, and there's still a built-in microphone and speakers. The speakers on here are actually pretty decent considering the size of this device. They're not the greatest sounding, but they definitely get the job done. There's also the left and the right LED strips, which do change colors depending on what you're doing in game. And while you definitely need an internet connection to use this, I've actually been using this outside of my house by just hotspotting my cell phone. Connection wise, using your home internet would obviously be better, but I think the minimum threshold for download speeds is just 15 megabits per second. Now for a device that's so great for me personally, I know there's a lot here that might be missing, which might actually be a deal breaker for some people. 
comfortable. The first thing for me at least is that I'm almost anxious to bring it with me anywhere I go. It's by no means a small device and I feel like a single drop would absolutely wreck this thing. I imagine this is kind of the same thing with other handhelds like a Steam Deck perhaps, but for myself I'm definitely going to be investing in some sort of case. And something that still works but I could definitely want for more is a better experience for first person shooters. Now this is definitely not just limited to this device, but I can 100% say that the Portal is absolutely the best experience I have had on FPSs when it comes to handhelds. What I mean for that is that there is still enough of a delay that you can't really aim all too well. For myself, when I do play a game like Overwatch, I stick to heroes that simply don't require much aim. For Call of Duty though, honestly, you're still just gonna get wrecked. Also, keep in mind for battery, you're working with about three to four hours of screen on time. While not the greatest, it'll definitely get you through commutes and a little bit more. Still, for the extended sessions, you're gonna wanna find a way to charge up. And when it does come down to everything outside of gaming, you don't have any access to any of that, meaning there's no YouTube, Netflix, Apple Music, or Spotify. It's kind of something I really do wish was there. Lastly, and probably the biggest thing here, is that there is no Bluetooth support. I truly do feel like this was deliberate by Sony, of course, to make us buy their Pulse Elite and Pulse Explore accessories coming out, and I personally told myself I wasn't going to be getting either of them. Then I actually tried the portal and really enjoyed it. The first night I laid in bed to play with a big ass headset on, I realized how goofy and uncomfortable it was. They got me guys, I'm sorry, I did end up pre-ordering the earbuds, but we'll see how that turns out. And of course, as much as I love the PlayStation Portal, I'm not going to pretend like there aren't other options. I've personally used my Windows laptop on the lake with my PlayStation 5 controller. This is definitely a great option with the DualSense controller, and honestly, it's kind of realistic for students. There's also the mobile apps you might want to use on your iPad or even the dedicated backbone like devices for our smartphones. And all of those definitely get the job done but I can say they don't quite do it like the portal. For me it comes down to the overall experience and as somebody who really really just wants to play my PlayStation 5 this is the closest thing I can get to sometimes. And while the internet will tell you this is the best thing ever or the worst thing ever it's not really because that sort of depends on you. It depends on how you use it and how much value it brings to you personally. There's a lot of sources absolutely shitting on this device and it's obvious they're not the target user for this product. In the end though, it's important to really get a good idea if this is right for you and your lifestyle. For now though, I'll keep enjoying my PlayStation Portal the best way I know how, which is whenever I actually can. Anyways, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Till next time.